And he didn't get the song at all. And um, said, no, I don't really like it. Um, went away, built the track, gave, played it back to him. He loved it. So what does that say? Because it's more about A&R men, probably, than anything else. I think that's a real issue nowadays, is that when, where the old style A&R men got great songs, you know, the, uh, the, the, the idea of Carol King writing a great song for someone, uh, Karen Boyce, um, <laughs> The Brill Building. Uh, that they, what they want now is, is, is a song that's, that's fully tracked up and almost a record. Now the problem when you've got a young artist and you send that young artist to six or seven different songwriters who um, all have to produce a track of some almost finished kind, is they end up with an album that's very itsy bitsy. It doesn't sound like a concept at all. Uh, the album has no continuity. So, you know, what do you do then? Do you, do, you, do you just send that artist away and say, these are the demos? Because most of them aren't. They've spent weeks making them, uh, making them into demos, uh, almost records. And I, and I think this is all detrimental for the business. So, you know, thinking back, you know, when great, the great albums that we all know, Sade, for example, you know, that album had a sound that you knew what you were getting when you put it on from beginning to end. So, and I don't think that's the case when you've got six or seven different producers on one album. And do you think that the whole X Factor pop money phenomenon and producers too? No, no, yeah. That the singers become more important than the song in these things. It becomes, as you said, even some of karaoke performances. And the whole show is based on. I'm not even sure the singers are relevant anymore, to be honest with you. The pros are off. Yeah. They choose covers, they're not about new songwriting, they just choose songs, and they seem to me to be the vehicle to show off that performance rather than to show off the song. And that, it, it kind of gets to one of them where they did um, My Way in one of these, like 19 or something like that. Have you seen My Way when you're 19? There's a disconnect between singers. Well, and I mean, albums that are you know, fully complete do sound like proper albums are usually when it's a singer-songwriter. You know, and Amy Winehouse, <coughs> or you mentioned The Killers. Um, and, I, and I guess the, the albums that suffer now when, when it's a singer who isn't a songwriter, I think. I'm trying to write the album. They normally have maybe one or two of the albums. Okay, let's talk a bit about some collaboration. Okay, you mentioned that you might like, certainly stand up both on your own. And you both collaborated a lot, yeah, a lot. What makes a, what makes a good collaboration? I, I, hmm, the way I kind of like to do it, because, I, because of that weird thing of walking in a room for the first time and let's write a song, I find that a bit odd. I kind of like to get to know somebody slightly before I actually work with them. Because if you don't get on as people, you know, I, I don't really tend to get on with people in a, in a writing scenario. So we tend to go to the pub, uh, get drunk, <laughs> put the world to right, and then, and then go off and write a song together. And it seems to work for me, that. So, yeah. <laughs> and conversely, will you know within but it's, this is just not going to work. It's no point Absolutely. spending three weeks of your life in this I, 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 I really believe that if, if a collaboration isn't working, or more than that, if a song isn't working, then it's, you're not it's saving someone's brain. You're not doing a half operation. It's a bloody song. Move on and do another one. If it's not working, or you're the person, don't get too caught up in it. I've seen people spend hours and hours and hours getting well, paid about, about, about this idea, which was, if it's a wounded animal, Get it put down. <laughs> 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 yeah. um, that's my view. And you went with Jem, Godfrey. Yeah, I, know, well, I, I, had, a, successful I had a kind of permanent um, collaborator, um, and that really worked because because we both produced and we both wrote. So when one was concentrating on whether when whether whether the track was coming together properly, I was worrying about whether the, the song the lyrics coming together properly. And we Gary talked earlier on about collaborating with more than one person get to three, we kind of go, oh God, I've actually collaborated with, I don't think, what was the worst, probably six in the room at the same time, and it's just a nightmare, because three of them really have got not a clue what they're doing, and they slow the whole process down, and they'll say, occasionally they'll suggest something which is good, but most of the time you just kind of go, oh, for goodness sake, you know, please. And again, that's kind of a modern phenomenon. Oh, it is, yeah. 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 Music yeah. by yeah. committee, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. 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 I used to I used to find what I don't like about collaboration. I think is that you show someone half an idea. Because when I wrote for Standout, I would not show a song until it was utterly finished. You know, it was a bit like going out with 
without your trousers on, you know. <coughs> try a few suits on, try a different shirt, try this tie. When you're ready, you leave the house. That's guitar and voice, you think? Yeah, guitar voice, piano voice. And, um, and I think uh, that that's sometimes the, the hardest part when you're collaborating. I've got this um, verse idea, you know. And it's just so exposed, you know, and there's someone criticizing it who wants to contribute as well. I think you've got to, you've got to approach the room, really with all nerves gone, you know, and just saying, you know, I'm just going to throw things around. It might be crap. Shoot it if it is. Yeah. I think you, know, you need to know each other's strengths if you collaborate. Like, I've got a, a really good singer top line writer, maybe like a Wayne Hector type guy, and you know he's got a phenomenal voice and he's a brilliant writer, so I'll just get lots of tracks ready. And I've done sessions with him and I've done through 13 tracks before we've done something we love doing. So and how did it work with, you, with Kathy? Um, no, well, Kathy's quite musical, so like, she likes you to start ground up and just play play along and jam, really. I mean, but a lot of other writers like, it, like, like tracks to write, so it just depends where it is. You know. Collaborating with artists is, is, is often a good thing for a writer because you, you kind of know where you're going with it then. If you're just writing a song, um, really helps to know who you're writing it for or kind of what area you're if you're going to, you know talking about purely being a songwriter it doesn't have a band you know or an act if you're just writing songs then that's fine but it's it's not easy to do because you kind of it's like playing darts with your eyes shut you know if you really want to hit a double top then you need to look where you're going and, and, and aim for a double top and so if you, if you if, and rob will probably agree that if you're writing with an artist it makes it a lot easier because you kind of listen to their sound you like them to start with otherwise you'd never work with them, you like what they're doing. You're just trying to give them a new spin on what they presumably already had. I like working with new artists and kind of creating a sound if they can write, if they can write. You get a lot of these things nowadays where you're put with people and they are writers. Well, they actually they're not, most of them. Um, uh, Pushing manager. Because <laughs> there was a point where people thought, okay, well, they're not making any money being an artist, so all these writers are making shitloads of money, so let's make them writers. And it's the adult word, play the third thing, you know. Um, it goes on a lot, and it probably goes on even more now than it did. Just because somebody can rock, can 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 sing well, doesn't make them a songwriter. They're two entirely different things. You know, I can drive a car, but I'm not going to walk up to Lewis Hamilton and go, "That can't be that tricky, can it?" You know, <laughs> it's slightly faster, but it's the same basic principle, isn't it? Um, and if you're working with, with a new artist, do you do much research on what they've done before, or, or, or direction, or the yeah. genre? Yeah. 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 I think you should know where they're coming from. So what Would you like to write away from the studio? No, I'm always in the studio. I mean, ideas, but occasionally you can get lyrical ideas. And so you might do be tracks from the space to two screen runs and uh, on paper. Um, both really, yeah. I'm completely I hate the studio to write. I really like my bedroom, my living room, somewhere really comfortable where you've got like some nice books and cards that you kept, that you love those pictures. And um, for me, a studio is just the most sterile environment. It's even in recording, I hate it, you know. Um, so I think, you know, trying to be inspired for me, sometimes it's looking out the window. Most okay? studios don't have, even have that. And do you ever have it? Yeah, when authors tend to you know, have a regimented day, they get up and so they walk with a dog and then they do two hours and then they come back and they. They would write in the same place and make sure things in the right sort of place around. Do you, do you have a, a sort of fertile environment that where you do your best work or could it be anywhere? Yeah. Yeah, and uh, there are people who get up and so they write every day because they don't know if they they may have a great song in them that day. I actually like to write an A and R man says, I've got a got a track for you to do, you know, because sometimes you can write these great songs but they've got nowhere to live, nowhere yeah, to go, and it's, it's incredibly yeah. frustrating. Well, it's that old um, Sunny Palm tree show, isn't it? What comes first, music or the lyrics, the phone call? Never a true word. And how many other songs finished? Do you do a lot of rewriting? Do you say, that's it, that cannot be better than it is now? I play around a bit, like it's maybe cheap on the shoe manager or get get second opinion to it. Yeah, be careful who those second opinions yeah, are. Yeah, be careful. <laughs> Uh, if those, yeah, if those second opinions are mates, then the car is amazing. Uh, you know, or you, you know, members of your family. Yeah, exactly. They, they tend to always say everything you've ever done is amazing. Play it to somebody you respect if you want. If you want a decent view of it. Um, uh, and as to when it's finished, I'm not a great rewriter simply because um, 